One of the not so fun parts of being a software engineer is having to ramp up to new code bases. But look, whether it's your first job or your 10th, working with new unfamiliar code bases is part of the software engineering job. And ramping up to large enterprise level code bases or figuring out all the puzzle pieces of complex microservice architectures is a daunting task even for experienced software engineers. But with some simple strategies and calculated approaches, it can be much less stressful. And in this video, I'll share with you five steps on using a hybrid top-down as well as a bottom-up approach that can help you quickly and effectively ramp up to any new code base and set you up to succeed as a key contributor to your team. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle. I have over 20 years of experience in the industry and I'm currently a senior software engineer at Microsoft. If you're new to this channel, my goal here is to help you get the best out of your career by mentoring you around five key pillars of career development. Technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel and follow me at Utsavized for behind the scenes and monthly Q&As. Okay, step one, long before you even write a single line of code, review any technical documentation you have access to that pertains to the code base you're trying to ramp up to. These documents help you visualize the big picture and understand the various components involved in the project. For me personally, there's something even more valuable in these design documents. See, almost all design docs go through various rounds of engineering reviews where people read the docs and leave a ton of comments, suggestions, and questions. More often than not, if you open the review panel of the docs, these comments are still there. Reading through these comments will not only give you a better understanding of the project, but in addition to that, one, help you see how more experienced software engineers approach a design proposal that they've never seen before. And second, make you realize that there is no such thing as a silly question. Okay, step two, identify areas that you should focus on. Grab someone experienced in the code base and ask them to walk you through the whole project. You will most likely only grab 10 to 20% as they walk you through uh, the project, but that's normal. Try to grasp as much as possible. Ask a lot of questions and take notes. We'll revisit this later in the process, but for now, your number one goal is to identify the components and the areas that you should focus on to start off with. If there's a bug fix you're trying to make or a feature you're trying to add, find out what parts of code that you need to be familiar with. Or if you're just ramping up and don't have anything particular to fix or implement, then identify the areas that naturally interest you. Okay, step three, gather everything you'll need to set up and debug the code. This is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you'll need an IDE, editor, probably some extensions, debugging tools, local environment, test environment, probably some access to various security groups, monitoring tools, log databases, metrics dashboard, etc., etc. Usually there's a neatly written guide that helps you set everything up, but that's not always the case, especially in a rapidly evolving project. And even if it's a pretty stable project, what I've personally witnessed is that most folks that have been in the team for a while have set up the environment a while back and since it just works, they don't really remember how to debug issues that you may be facing. A good strategy here is to communicate with two different groups of people. First, the subject matter expert who can give you tips, tricks, and best practices on setting everything up. But even more importantly, talk to the last person that joined the team or ramped up to the same code base right before you they usually have the most up-to-date context on setting up the project and will have recently faced similar issues that you may also be facing. Also, try to run the code locally where possible because this helps you visualize all the moving parts. Although this is always not possible, especially if you're working with complex distributed architectures. All right, so far you have written zero lines of code and it's been a very top-down approach where you understand the high-level idea behind the project and then you understand some of the components uh, that you need to ramp up on and then you understand the overall infrastructure that it runs on. Now it's time to flip things around and go bottom up. Step four, learn one or more components in depth. Remember the areas that you identified earlier that you need to cover, whether that was out of necessity or out of interest. Time to try to learn them in detail. Hunt for the spec docs for the feature. They usually have all the scenarios and requirements and feature level dev docs linked within. Find the project managers who worked on the features and they are usually your best resource for the spec docs. Once you understand the use cases um, for that feature, pretend to be the end user and just test the product functionality. But only that you will be using various breakpoints throughout the code to see how the code path flows or the data flows through. This is critical to understanding how the feature is implemented. 
One tip here is that if you're stuck with anything for more than half a day, ask for help. You're no good to anyone if you're stuck by yourself. Also, to understand the code even better, see if there's a bug you can fix or a small feature you can add, or maybe make a simple improvement. Even just improving logging and seeing them flow through to the database or adding a new metric and see them reflected in the dashboard is a useful drill. Also, you can add unit tests to the code if the coverage is low. This is easy extra credit for someone who's new to a code base. Another thing that helps in this stage is to browse through various PRs that are in the same code path. See what code changes have been recently made and what the reviewers have said. If there's an active PR, ask the reviewer or the dev to walk you through the PR. If you know someone who's actively working on the same area, ask to pair program with them. Or if you don't feel comfortable contributing to code just yet, ask if you can shadow them for a few hours while they code. Um, of course, be respectful of their time and their space, but most developers should be more than happy to have you shadow them. Repeat this process with a few different components or features until you feel like you have a good grasp of the area. Be patient though. I know there's excitement to add code and get something checked in right away, but it can be embarrassing to send a bad PR in rush. Instead, it is much better to take time and be patient through the process. This is the part that usually takes the longest during the ramp up phase. Okay, before we move on to step five, a quick word from today's sponsor, Formation, who have supported this channel for a long time now. Formation is an online fellowship for early to mid-career software engineers who want to join top companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, and more. Formation uses adaptive learning technology to create a custom program for all fellows, tracking their progress and closing skill gaps on a personalized learning roadmap. They have a top-tier team of engineers from Meta and Nextdoor who have interviewed thousands of candidates and trained hundreds of interviewers during their tenure. Formation isn't just about prepping you to clear interviews, though. Their fellows leave the program with the knowledge and confidence to thrive at the world's leading companies. On average, fellows who complete their program increase their compensation by $96,000. You can also use their future salary calculator to explore potential compensation you could be getting based on your experience. So if you're interested in checking out Formation's fellowship program, you can apply for free on their website through the link in the description below. And regardless of whether you're accepted into the program or not, you will get valuable career advice from their assessment and a free interview prep guide that's really helpful resource uh, for your interviews, especially at FANG level companies. Thanks again to Formation for sponsoring this video. Okay, step five is to extend your expertise. Here, you basically keep going up the pyramid to a higher level where you initially started. Only this time, you'll have much more context on the inner workings of the low-level components of the project, which will help you understand the project even more. As you work on some of the low-level features, you will naturally find that there are other dependencies that you have or that areas you're working on are dependencies for other high-level areas. This is a natural progression for you to follow and learn. As you unravel the dependency chain or the relational path, you will find that you will naturally walk up the tree towards the root or the overall product. So in this step, you basically find a next set of components or features and repeat step four and five until you feel confident on the whole project. Periodically though, after you understand every couple of features or components, grab another senior engineer or architect and have them do the design walkthrough again. You'll be surprised how much more you'll grasp each time you do this review because of the added context of hands-on experience. One good way to not tax the same engineer over and over again to do this review is to round robin your walkthroughs between three or four different people. That way you don't bug the same person and you also get very different perspectives on the project. This whole process may take a few months for a small project and years for a large project and some areas you may never even touch. That's normal. Ramp up never really finishes. It's an iterative process where you move around a large code base or different teams or even organizations. So the more comfortable you get with traversing through these five steps, the easier you will find to ramp up to new code bases over and over again. Check out this other video on context-based learning if you wanna learn how you can remember things much more effectively. And check out this video if you want really useful tips on growing as a software engineer. Please like this video if you found it useful and share your own tips on ramping up to new code bases in the comment section below. Subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.